Dear colleagues, it is a pleasure for me to address you on this topic, digital workforce needs and the role of universities in the new world. I will highlight the strategic actions that we are putting in place at the University of Mauritius to face the digital disruption and to prepare our university to meet the challenges of tomorrow. I apologize sincerely for not being present in person due to some pressing last-minute commitments. For any comments or further interaction, please do feel free to drop me an email. This slide is there to set the context of the presentation. What is digital disruption? Every new technology brought some kind of disruption with it. When the iPhone was first introduced, that was a real disruption in the mobile phone market. Google has been a massive disruption in different dimensions, and we are still experiencing different types of disruption from Google. Are we therefore ready to embrace disruption in our traditional universities? When Airbnb owns no real estate, or Netflix owns no cinemas, can a university simply envisage to no longer owning courses or to award degrees, but rather, let's say, micro-credentials. I am not saying this should happen, but the simple reflection, engaging in a simple reflection of whether we have considered that such possibilities that look crazy today could in fact be the reality of tomorrow. So, what will the workforce of the future look like? According to this infographic from the World Economic Forum, 65% of the children in primary schools today will work in jobs that don't even yet exist. 80% want to work with cutting-edge technology, while 51% would be freelancing, or if we want to put it in another terms, entrepreneurs. This brings us to the reflection, once again, of whether our universities are doing what they should. And how does this engage our responsibility as individuals, as university leaders and academics towards our youth and the nation? Now that we have looked at the workforce of the future, we also need to understand the future of work. This future work is heavily reliant on the interconnection of disciplines. At the interconnection of disciplines, though, we find the emerging digital technologies and all the disruptions that they bring. This again prompts us to reflect on whether universities can still operate as ivory towers and pursue the segregation of disciplines in a business-as-usual manner. The future of work is based on the knowledge societies and requires different skill sets on top of the core competencies. A massive disruptor to be, and which is already in place to a great extent, is the re-emergence, I would say, of AI and robotics in much more powerful and impactful ways. There has been this alarming rumor that machines will soon replace humans. However, results from a survey of senior executives shows that this fear is exaggerated, as 69% of the respondents do not fear the introduction of machine co-workers. In fact, they believe that machines, robots, or AI-powered systems will automate their work environments and enable humans to take on more value-added and rewarding roles. Machines can enhance the human capabilities and efficiency in doing jobs properly, but the superheroes remain the humans. However, having said that, the same question comes forward. What do we need to do to have a workforce ready to work in such environments? How do we become the superheroes in this disruptive 
technology era. The first element we need to understand is what type of skills our young generations need to be able to face the future. This is what we call 21st century skills. Universities, especially in the developing world, and emerging economies, taking Mauritius as an example, have mainly focused on producing the workforce to meet the socio-economic development needs of the country. The whole education system have been conceived in such a way that their core activities are to equip graduates with foundational knowledge, often only the core content knowledge. In the past, for example, a humanities or a life science graduate would not be expected to be ICT proficient or even ICT literate. Writing a piece of code would be the task of the computer science engineer. This proposition is no longer valid to meet the future of work and the future workforce needs. There is a need for a holistic development of the individual covering foundational knowledge, humanistic knowledge and meta-knowledge. Industries need professionals who are experts in their field, can apply their expertise to solve actual problems with new solutions and who are able to operate in a culturally diverse work environment. We have often been hearing that Africa is the future. But how does Africa become that future that everyone is contemplating for? Africa has missed on a lot of the industrialization age due to conflicts, famine, poverty and AIDS, for example. However, Africa has been catching up lately in the innovation sector. Africa has experienced 51% growth in funding of African tech ventures in 2018 as compared to 2016. There were 442 tech hubs in mainland Africa in 2018. It is expected that robotics, AI, biotechnology, blockchain and other technologies will cause massive disruption in Africa. So, what type of ecosystem do we need in Africa for it to succeed on the innovation frontiers and adoption of disruptive technologies to solve its pressing problems? One such ecosystem is the Knowledge Society for Sustainable Development and Economic Growth. There are four key pillars in this ecosystem, education, science and technology, innovation and ICTs. ICTs is considered a cross-cutting pillar. Knowledge societies are identified as societies based on the creation, dissemination and utilization of information and knowledge to enhance socio-economic development. This begs the question once again, what education for the knowledge society? Our existing system treats the industrialization era. That is, it's about producing disciplined manpower to work in a linear process model. I like here to quote Bill Gates, who says, there is not a need to reform our current education system, but a need to replace them completely to address 21st century challenges. In pragmatic terms, this cannot happen overnight, but this statement of Bill Gates illustrates the urgency that we have to move from the status quo and reimagine our current educational models. So in our context, at the University of Mauritius, the question we ask ourselves, are we walking the talk? How do we proceed? How do we achieve these goals? So I will now explain the approach that we adopted at the university since 2017 to realign our educational strategy to embrace the digital disruption and prepare the workforce of the future and the for the future of work. We started by engaging with what we call, or what is called in fact, the foresight and future thinking methodology. 
It's quite simple, looking at the past and how it affected or is affecting the present, and use these experiences to plan for the future. Looking at probable futures, preferred futures, and then elaborating plans on how to get to that desired future that we want. How do we look at the past, the present, and the future? The first phase is to carry out an environmental scan of signals and trends that might have an impact on the future. We need to deepen our understanding of the changes that are occurring and the change that we want to bring. The next phase is to engage in strategic thinking. This is where we elaborate the possible and alternative futures and deciding on the preferred future. Finally, the third phase is the strategic planning to implement the identified actions that will help us to achieve that preferred future. This is an illustration of the key trends that we identified globally while conducting our action. We can see open innovation using the 4P model, public, private, people, partnerships, to drive innovation. Borderless and transnational provision through ICTs are also gaining significant momentum and is identified as a key opportunity for expansion, especially with respect to the changing higher education demographics. In Europe, we have witnessed university mergers and increased North-South partnerships for research and development activities. At the time we took office in 2017, the university was not able to cope with the disruption that it was experiencing. An outdated educational model and curriculum, lack of research funding and no innovation, administrative red taping and financial sustainability issues. The worst case scenario would have been to regress and experience more crisis situations. The second scenario, which we adopted in the first instance, was the implementation of a turnaround plan to stabilize the institution and improve on essential areas. This is to maintain a status quo. The third scenario, which we started to envisage once the institution was stable, was the transformation scenario. This slide illustrates the classic alternative futures that most universities would try to embrace depending on where they stand at the present time. Some will be focused on upper quadrants, trying to achieve prestige status in either teaching or research, or both, while others would be emphasizing in their initial phases on massification of either teaching or research, or both. At the university, we pushed that concept further with a vision to become a research engaged and entrepreneurial university. We focused on the triple helix model, where the university is no longer at the center of the process. This is why we were often referred to as ivory towers. And this is now replaced by innovation. And the university rather becomes a partner with the government and industry to drive innovation through research and entrepreneurial activities. This is how we see the university being positioned as a key actor to contribute to the development of a knowledge-based economy. So how do we get there? We started, first of all, by a complete revamping of our educational model with the following core components. The first one, the adoption of technology-enabled learning on a university-wide scale. We then migrated to the learner-centered credit system, inspired by the ECTS, by focusing on the development of key 21st century competencies and skills. We are increasing the involvement of international faculty on our programs, through recruitment of visiting professors, 
guest lectures online and through the offer of collaborative programs with both industry and foreign universities. We are championing the concept of industry on campus in Mauritius. On this slide, you can see an example of a flipped classroom model put in place for a joint program with Accenture Mauritius, who have been given a space on our campus. Other actors will soon join this initiative. We have signed an agreement with Ceridian Mauritius for the setting up of a digital innovation lab on the campus to promote entrepreneurial activities and digital innovation. Our educational philosophy has in fact shifted from the traditional behaviorist learning models to more socio-constructivist model to promote active learning and the application of knowledge. Project-based learning is more and more omnipresent in our curriculum and we are gradually shifting away from the traditional supervised written examinations. We are working on an innovative digital learning framework to enhance the experience of students with badges and micro-credentials of the university built on blockchain technology. Over the longer term, the idea is to have a formal, a formal badge system, a formal badge to credit mapping system to address industry needs in more efficient ways. We have furthermore established an incubator at the university in two key areas, digital technologies and agri-tech development. We are building an agri-tech park. The incubator operates under the Knowledge Transfer Office, which also regroups the University Industry Liaison Office and the IP Office. Impactful research is our new mantra at the university. We are putting up strategies to institutionalizing research at the UOM through the establishment of pools of research excellence. Our research budget has increased from 4 million in 2017 to 16 million in 2019. There are different research funding schemes that have been established to promote basic research, applied research, and proof of concepts development at university level. There is a need to think global and act local. The way we go global at the university is to engage in international partnerships on projects that will have local impacts. For instance, we have partnered with the University of Arizona to offer dual degree programs in niche areas such as cyber operations and high-end medicine. We are partnering with international companies to set up a data science center to develop the fields of AI, analytics, and machine learning. We are also engaged in an ambitious project in infotainment, where we are pushing for the first university startup in post-production and visual effects. Embracing digital disruption and change is, however, a rough ride. There are constant challenges and it's a lengthy process. However, those who drive change need to be aware of the change pyramid and the resistance to acceptance cycle. The critical success factor is to be able to get through the denial, anger, confusion, crisis phases that any disruptive technology or change will initially entail until reaching the acceptance phase and where a new confidence emerge. We have experienced this while implementing the major change in our education system to move to the learner-centered credit system in the recent two years. To address resistance to change, there is also a need to shift from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset. Constant stakeholder engagement is necessary, although this is not an easy process. As long as the fixed mindset prevails, there will be risk aversion and a lack of commitment to the new vision and a dissociation of the employees to the actions of the senior management team. On a concluding note, my message is that to me the challenges of tomorrow 
it is not just straightforward to invest massively in technology to embrace disruption. A whole ecosystem of disruption has to be envisaged and appropriate support mechanisms need to be put in place. To summarize, these are the important things that should not be overlooked. The first one is the promotion of the growth mindset and a calculated risk-taking approach. Risk aversion will simply not work. There is a need to engage in transformational leadership through the empowerment of staff at all levels. It is not sufficient that only senior teams are on board to embrace disruption. Therefore, change management is essential. There is also a need to establish the right and robust institutional values, such as integrity, trust, transparency and open communication. In fact, there is a constant need to communicate, communicate and communicate. Finally, change agents at all levels can bring the desired outcome or can help to bring the desired outcome outcome, I would say, as change has to be ultimately embraced and not imposed. Thank you for your attention.